Hello and welcome, I am Patchworth, your game clown, once again, and welcome to The Good, The Bad, and The Undead. This is a uh, story demo, uh, which was actually uh, sent to me by the developers, which was very nice of them. I, sorry guys, it took me so long to get to this. Life, as you know, goes on. But I'm on it now, I'll have this to you as soon as I can. Uh, this is uh, The Last Stand of Walter Course. This is, I'm assuming, Mr. Walter, or Mr. Course. He's looking rather coarse, that's for sure. So, um, here we go. This is a preview for The Good, The Bad, and The Undead by Ashton Saylor. I'm hoping I'm pronouncing these right. And Jamie Thompson. Thank you for taking a look at this short preview story. The intent of the story is to introduce you to our version of the Weird West, let you meet a couple of the characters, demonstrate what this particular style of interactive fiction looks like. The following story will not be included in the published book, so this is a unique opportunity to explore the background events occurring here. If you enjoy the story, please don't forget to like the Facebook page at Facebook Good Bad Undead. I'll, I'll certainly be there. And keep an eye out for our Kickstarter campaign. It will run July 30 to August 30th. Thank you for your support. Again, I am so sorry it's taking me so long to get to this. So anyway, as you've seen, this is actually just a demo for the story, just like I did with the previous game. Um, this will not be appearing in the story, and uh, since this was actually sent to me by the developers, it's not available for you to preview, so I'll just read it, see where it goes. This is sort of a first look um, to sort of see how everything works. So let's just roll into it, guys, and see what the good, the bad, and the undead has to offer. I'm already loving the uh, concept, like Wild West with zombies. I'm I'm already pretty interested. Oh, and it looks like with this here, we've actually got the, the one, and it'll tell us to go to a certain spot like before. Okay, so we've already kind of, uh, we're kind of already familiar with this. So let's just see if that is correct. U.S. Marshal. Marshal jo uh, Josiah uh, Da Silva. Crouch behind a... Uh, Oh, maybe I should do this in, like, a cowboy. Marshal Josiah Da Silva crouched behind a low rise of rocks. He sighed, eyeing the little hut on the hillside. A bloody trail wound his way up the hill to the wooden shack that ended there. If this man was still lived, he'd be in that hut. A shot rang out, sending up a spurt of dust from a nearby rock. The marshal swore and ducked lower behind the stony embankment. Yep, he's alive, he muttered to himself. Carefully, staying low, he examined the terrain. The ground was uneven, and it would be easy enough to crawl his way to the low ridge, drawn closer to the shack. Soon he would be in a little juniper grove that would shield his approach almost to the cabin. He tried not to think about the fate of the family in the cabin. If he was lucky, they weren't home. Ooh, I'm already liking this a lot. All right. Moving swiftly but sh quietly, he followed the path that he laid out. But as he reached the edge of the line of rocks, he realized he would have to cross an open gap before reaching the shelter of the juniper grove. He swore. Bang! Then leaned against the uh, cool, sheltering stone inside. Poor Marshal, we'll get you through this, man. He pulled a rosary from his pocket and kissed the cross dangling from it, whispering a short prayer. Then he tucked the rosary away again and looked up the hill. Jaw set! He's got gumption. I like it. He took his to his feet and bolted across the gap. Gunshots rang out. Pew! Pew! And the, heard the bullets whizzing through the air where his head had just been. And then he was among the trees, safe for now. He leaned against the tree to catch his breath. He was no longer as young as he once been. Boy, I feel you, brother. From here, he, at the edge of the juniper stand, he could see uh, hundreds of miles out across the wide, flat desert of Wyoming. The oh, sky was deep blue, the color of his daughter's eyes had been. Oh no, what happened to his daughter? Oh man, this is really engaging already. Um, clenching his draw, jaw, he looked away from the sky towards the cabin visible through the trees. Old pain and fury settled into a fierce, unrelenting determination. It was that determination that which had led his path through five years of his life, and now this sun-blasted hillside. As he started moving towards the juniper trees, he heard a motion from somewhere up ahead. Then it came again, inching closer, 
He drew his gun. He wrenched back a branch and leveled his gun. To find a young girl curled in a ditch between two bushes, she was sobbing softly. Oh, God. Um, she screamed when she saw him, cringing away and crying out in terror. Josiah felt bad, but all of this noise would tell Course exactly where they'd been. Oh, okay, hold on, hold on. Okay, here we go. Choices, choices. Oh, my goodness. Um, oh, well, we gotta save the little girl, so let's, let's take a look here. Oh, God. Um, ooh, I don't like these choices. All right. Uh, Josiah put away his gun and tried to calm the girl, turned to, to 13, or Josiah quickly covered the girl's mouth, turned to 19. Um, I feel like he'd be kind of a badass, so this would, would do it. But at the same time, I don't really want to scare a little girl. Uh, all right. You know what? Uh, oh, maybe, oh, maybe she's like part of the family. If she's part of the family and she's being like, oh yeah, no, we don't want to, we don't want to give away our position. I think we're gonna have to go with nineteen. Oh, I don't, I don't like this decision at all. All right, nineteen. Here we go. Here we go. Nineteen. Yeah, this is uh, pretty much like the uh, the other game that we played earlier. So uh, pretty easy to, pretty easy. Uh, and this one doesn't require stats, so. There's definitely that going for it. Uh, but yeah, this is definitely different than you'd find with the Choose Your Own Adventure sort of books. It's very similar, but it's more fluid, I feel. And I'm really liking the story so far. <clears throat> anyway, 19. Josiah quickly covered the girl's mouth. Her eyes went wide and her body stiffened in panic. He grimaced, regretting the necess uh, necessity of scaring her. Silence, he said. You understand? Silencia. His accent was <laughs> Yeah, his accent was atrocious. I don't know anything about that. And he probably hadn't even pronounced the word right, but she seemed to understand. Still stiff with fear, the girl managed a jerky nod. Josiah let her go, carefully, watching to make sure she wouldn't scream again. When she did nothing but watch him with panicked eyes, he slowly pulled out his gold marshal's bat. See? I'm a U.S. marshal. There's been a bad man in there, and I'm, I'm here to catch him. He pointed to the cabin. The girl began to speak. I think I'm going to just do the uh, the cowboy voice for the for these things here. Anyway, the cowboy, uh, sorry, the girl began to speak. Words spilling out of her in the lang language of the Spaniards. He, she pointed and gestured to the cabin, but he couldn't understand a word of it. Whoa! Josiah said, raising a hand. Portuguese I can do, or English, but Spanish ain't my tongue. What's your name? Maria, she said after a long pause. Maria, could you tell me what happened here? As the girl nodded and she spoke heavily and heavily accented English, turned to page five. All right, five. The girl nodded and spoke in heavily accented English. Oh, maybe if I did the other choice, I would have changed as though I spoke Spanish? I don't know. Um... Then again, this is just a demo, so maybe it uh, it's kind of abbreviated. So this is clearly not going to be uh, the absolute final representation of the game. So uh, e either way, it, it's a it's a good way for us to get an idea of how the gameplay is going to be. Five. The girl nodded and spoke heavily accented English. He come from nowhere. My family. He surprises. us. He take me papa, me mama, me sisters, and my brothers. Only I escape. Ugh. She broke into small sobs and once more. Oh, I'm going to murder this guy. I'm going to murder this guy. Josiah grimaced. Hadn't Course taken enough lives already? Listening carefully, he could hear the exchange of voices coming from within the cabin. Too brief and muffled to make out the words. At last, some of the, at least some of the family was still alive in there. Though ignoring Course, he couldn't bring himself to make any promises to the girl. He patted her awkwardly on the shoulder, then, without speaking, he drew a six-shooter and inched his way through the trees of the building. The grove took him very near to the cabin, and no window faced his direction for course to take pot shots at him. He paused behind a tree to wipe away a bead of sweat and think. Ever since that day, five years ago, the only thing keeping him sane had been the law. The law gave him rules, gave him structure to the fury inside him contained him. 
and his mitt made him just and the man inside the cabin a monster. Sometimes he was afraid there was no difference between them. Oh, I really like this character. Uh, this guy reminds me a lot of, if anybody's ever read Terry Pratchett, reminds me a lot of um, Commander Vimes. Ooh, I like this guy. The law required that he give a man a fair chance to surrender, but when he looked up in the sky, he couldn't s he could see his daughter's eyes. It's all over, course. Come on on before anyone else gets hurt. Josiah yelled. Oh, oh, that's my choices. Um, Josiah gripped his gun more tightly and crept silent to the cabin. No, we're going guns blazing. Absolutely. Fourteen it is. This dude's a badass. All right, fourteen. It's all over, course. Come on out before anyone else gets hurt. Josiah called. His voice drifted across the hillside to the windows in the small cabin, temporarily breaking the tense silence that lay over a blanket like the, uh, over the hillside. The Mexican farm family looked up from the sound and where they lay huddled together in one corner of the main room in their small wooden cabin. And Walter Corse looked up as well. Walter's face twisted in a snarl when he heard the call. How would, he, how would that cussed marshal pinned him down here like this? been sloppy that's what it was after so many years of leading that man around like a ghost he'd finally gotten sloppy that and the damn leg wound hope i gave that to him he stood and limped to the front window to look out he scanned the hillside below him looking far left to uh, that little window because it would follow uh, he scanned that hillside below him looking as far left and right as the little window would allow but nothing the bastard knew how to move across the land, that was for sure. You don't mess with the marshal. He turned with a glance towards the back of the cabin, but the back window opened only about ten feet the, up the hillside, sloping up. If he could be seen through that window, it would be too late already. It wouldn't be worth the pain in his leg to limp over there. Grimacing, he looked down at the leg. Oh, wait a minute, hold on. He was still covered in blood from the lucky shot that had caught him in the calf earlier. He shook his head. If the damn marshal wasn't breathing down his neck right now, he'd have made one of these Mexicans bandaged up. As it was, there wasn't time. Uh, he looked up at the hostages. There were seven of them, a big family. If the marshal forced his way in, he might have to kill one of them. Maybe more than one. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, no. Oh, no. I have to play the bad guy? Oh, shit, no. Oh, this is definitely not an RPG. This is just whatever story I feel like having. Oh, I don't want him to kill anybody. Nope, nope. He's too tired. Too tired. Mm -mm. Six. Too tired. Six. The idea of more killing just made Walter feel tired. Sometimes it seemed that the killing was all he had done, and for as long as he could remember. From the beginning, his life had been filled with blood. Maybe it would be better if the marshal finished him. No, he steeled himself. There was more. Just one more on his list. William's Masters. William Masters. And when he knew exactly where that last man was, where it had all started. Affliction, Texas. That's the name of a town? Uh, the town he had been taught to call home. All he needed to do was get out of this cabin, break away from the marshal, and get back home to Texas. And then he could end Masters and at long last put his mother's ghost to rest. Oh no, he's sympathetic. He didn't know what next, and couldn't think of that now. The damn marshal would be kicking down the door any second now. But which door? He couldn't defend them all. Uh... Oh, no! Oh, no! These choices! Um... God, it, it, the only thing that makes sense is going to three... I mean, yeah, he could limp over there. I mean, he didn't say shoot anybody, but... Oh, am I going to take a hostage? That doesn't feel good. All right, all right, all right, let's go to three. Three. The safest course would hold a hostage in the main room. He looked over at the whimpering pile the farm family turned into. You, he hissed, pointing at the oldest of the children, a boy in his teen years. Come here. No, 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 no. He, uh, the father said. He extricated himself from the huddle and, holding his hands up, me, he said, thick me. That's a dad right there. He pointed to himself to su uh, supplement his clumsy English, moving closer to Walter and with hesitant steps. Fine, Walter said, gesturing to the, main, the man closer. 
He took a seat and forced the man onto his knees with his back to him in front of the place where he sat. It wouldn't be long now. He tried to ignore the ache in his leg and the sweet sweat beating down his neck. He wiped the, all of the thought clean from his mind so we could listen. He heard a whimpering of his hostages. Heard the wind on the, on the heights. He heard insects humming on a hot day, but mostly he heard the wind rustling the leaves of the juniper bush grove nearby. Unbeknownst to him, deep in that juniper grove, a young girl was stirring. Oh my god. 21. Unbeknownst to him, deep in that juniper grove, uh, a young girl was stirring. Maria's tears had dried, and she, as she lay in the heat, feeling the icy grip of fear in her heart, she realized something. If she didn't help her family, no one would. Dude, the marshal's right fucking there! Alright, 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 alright. That man with the gold badge didn't seem bad, but all he wanted to do was catch this man. He didn't care if her family lived or died. Couldn't be trusted. That's possibly true. Uh, Maria pulled herself to her feet, shaking, but with her jaw set, she moved quietly through the trees, looking, looking. There it was! A shovel was stuck in the dirt, just where she remembered her father le leaving it. Oh, God. She grabbed the shovel in both hands and had a satisfying weight to it. She turned towards the cabin. Marshal Del Silva kicked back the door. Turned to page 10. All right. <clears throat> 10. Marshal Del Silva kicked the man in the back door. You scanned... We were at the back? Okay. He scanned the room, holding his gun at the ready, but there was no one inside. It looked like a storage room of the so uh, farm supplies. Come in, Marshal. A drawling voice led him from deep inside. I don't mind. Josiah carefully moved forward, gun held high, and there was only one door from this room leading to the next, and he approached it cautiously. He listened for a moment in the corner, and then stepped abruptly through the door, gun leveling at the first person he saw. Course was sitting, leaning against one wall, resting his injured leg. In one hand, he grasped the hostage shirt. With the other, he held a gun to the farmer's head. Ooh. The rest of the farm fa farmer's family was huddled together in one corner. The mother of the family looked with terrified eyes at her husband. The farmer tried to look back at her, but his head was bent from the pressure of the gun against his temple, and his efforts to calm her looked pitiful. Josiah grimaced. Damn you, Course! Walter Course smiled, turned to seven. Speaking of course, my voice is getting a little coarse here. All this gravelly Texas talk. Seven. Walter Course smiled. Game over, Marshal. You lose, he whispered with exaggerated motions to the mouth. Not so fast, you bastard, Josiah growled. He held his gun with sweating hands, aimed at the killer. Course shoved his own pistol against the far farmer's head, saying, You shoot me, I shoot him. You don't want his blood in your hands. You're not that kind of man. These nice people need their father. He gestured with a glance toward the family. Course, beg for your life, Course said, shaking the farmer. The poor man began begging in Spanish, sweat dripping from his forehead. Okay, shut up, the killer said. The farmer gulped and stopped his stream of words. Josiah said firmly, You've killed enough, Course. It has to stop. The killer looked up at him with piercing blue eyes, incongruous with his dark skin and long, straight Indian hair. No, I really haven't. Yes, you have. Stop it. Josiah's vision went red. Ooh, God. For nine years, this much had been roaming freely, going wherever he wanted, killing whoever he wanted. This was the closest he'd ever come to catching the man, and there was no way he could have let the murderer go now. It wasn't happening. Go on. Get out of here before I make an example of this man and start on the children. You, you're, you're going down. You're going down. Uh, Josiah. Oh yeah. Fuck that shit. We're firing at this asshole. No, no. We're not talking through. Nope. Sixteen. We're doing this. Fuck this guy. Sixteen. Josiah fired. Consequences be damned. The shot rang out, followed by an almost instant by a second shot. <gasps> no. Oh, I forgot about the hostage! Uh, deafened, Josiah looked through the smoke of the gunfire to see what happened. Slowly, the fire slumped to his... Oh, no! Behind him, Walter Corse's head lulled, blazing a tra... I wanna... I wanna do over. 
Where's the save button on this thing? Uh, blazing trail of run uh, alongside his head. Josiah stepped forward quickly and removed the gun from the murderer's hands. Corse's eyes rolled. He was alive but barely conscious. No! The scream came from outside the front door and the child Maria came running through the room. Papa! She wailed, holding her father's body. Oh no! She looked up at Josiah. You killed him. You killed him, she screamed. Josiah looked away. He slapped a handcuff around Corse's hands. His job here was done. God damn it. And when he turned around, the little girl was holding a shovel in both hands, upraised to hit him. She swung down with it and stepped aside barely in time. Josiah grasped the shovel with one hand and pried it from grip. Sorry, he muttered. He took the prisoner away and the family's grief still ringing in his ears. Meanwhile, far to the south... Hmm. We haven't seen any undead yet. I wonder what's going to happen. 23. Meanwhile, far to the south, across miles of wide rolling plains and blasted desert near a little town men called Affliction, a mountain groaned. Red mesas and black bluffs seemed to ache with anticipation. The soil itself was stained, the earth here forever barren. The mountain groaned. That doesn't bode well. Ooh, look at that! Ooh! Down, down, far beneath the land of sky and sun, beneath the stained earth, a canyon opened on the remains of half-buried stonework. Deeper still, down through wet earth and dark rock, in an ancient cavern, a man crept across broken obsidian. Oh, the burning glow of his torch illuminated by a mighty sarcophagus? The heavy stone slabs painstakingly carven with he heretic runes. The young man shuffled closer. He ascended a large dais. Dais? Um, up to the sarcophagi itself. A sarcophagus. Torch casting dancing lights and shadows across his face. He paused to clean the lenses of his spectacles and then seated them again on his nose and leaned in. Inside the sarcophagus, a desiccated corpse lay, ancient and terrible. The sanctity of her aeon-long internment disturbed. Her hands were folded across her chest, mouth opened an eternal, soundless scream, an insect slowly crawling up one side of her head. Oh, my God! Great! I gotta say, with this one here, just like the last book we read, there's a lot of great imagery in here. This, this really does read like a Western, and this... Ugh. Uh, the young man record. It, this is this is good so far. I'm really kind of into this. I, I wish I had made different choices. Oh my God! Hold on. I'm just reading my head. What's going on here? The 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 young man recoiled and steeled himself. He started to reach in. The mummy's eyes flew open. A scream. Oh my God! Okay. Well. Um. Damn. Um. So that's it. Apparently, we're about to find. We've seen the good. We've seen the bad, and we're about to see the undead. Ooh, my goodness. I like it. I like it a lot. All right. Well, there you go, guys. That is uh, pretty pretty much the game that I can tell so far, since this is sort of like a, a gameplay demo. Uh, very similar to the way the last game played. Um, very much a choose-your-own-adventure game, but honestly, with this story, I'm really curious as to find out what happens. This this is right up my alley. Um, so here it is. Uh, if you like it, uh, here's Facebook, Good, Bad, Undead. Uh, read more Kickstarter for that. It will hopefully get supported, get uh, the money that it needs. I I, uh, I will do my best to, to make sure that this reaches its goals. So let's do it, guys. Um, I'm excited. But uh, that's it for me, guys. Uh, thanks for joining me. Hopefully you'll join me for it. I'm I'm really liking these games. I I am. I'd I'd actually like to do if I could find a better setup here. I'd like to do more of these. But uh, for right now, um, just I'll see you next time. Cheers, all.